Hello over users, Alex here with your guide and today I'm gonna show you how we can use multi-math element in order to get masks into Photoshop for our extensive post-production work. In the previous video I showed you how we can use CryptoMath one single render element in order to get our passes, however it didn't work for big scale projects like this one, we do need to attach a lot of those objects in order to have a really clean multi-mat without too many masks okay now in this video i'm going to show you how you can do it manually and i'm going to go to my render settings here into the render elements and as you can see here i have all my render elements selected and if i scroll down i have all of those multi-mat element 1, 2, 3, all the way down to 12. So those are my masks. As you can see, they work on three channels, R, RGB, red, green, and blue. And in order to add those, we're gonna click Add, select multi mat Element, and click OK. This is a new one that was added. When it comes first into your scene, it comes automatically with the numbers, 1, 2, 3, and we're gonna add as much as we need and we're gonna progress with those numbers. So what do those numbers mean, this one, two, three? Those are the object ID numbers for every element in my scene. If I right click, I can assign uh, object ID. So this is one, my water will, will be one. This boat, right click, object properties, object ID number two. And here on this boat, right click, object properties, object ID number three. So my multi-mat element right here, the first one that I created, will have one, two, and three. If I go further, I can select my tower, and this will be, you see, 15. Every tower will be a different 12. So when I'm giving those numbers, I have to go up. So the first will be one, two, three is this one. Then the next one will be four, five, six. Then the next one will be seven, eight, nine, and so on and so forth until we get to this 37, 38, and 39. So I had a lot of those masks. When you're done adjusting those and giving all the numbers, just make sure to give real names so you will not have the same multi-mat element uh, overriding the previous one. So the names has to be different in the multi-mat. I'm going to delete this. And uh, this is how it looks like the whole set of those render elements. I also have something that's called V-Ray Extra Text Map. This is my ambient inclusion, V-Ray Dirt Map, which got ambient inclusion inside here on the mode. And that's how I get my ambient inclusion rendered together with all the elements right here. So when I'm done adjusting those, I'm going to render this image as a high quality with the Radiance Map and Light Cache. But uh, as you can see here, my Radiance Map is really low. 2020 and a very low since this image is pretty big I'm gonna use slightly lower rendering settings in order to execute that render faster so when I'm saving those I'm gonna save it as a TIFF if we go here to my frame buffer in order to get those render elements out we need to uh, separate render elements channels so click this one and then you can have sRGB and um, make sure you save and you give a path where you want to save it. Okay, we're going to save 16-bit color. We can do 32. Uh, TIFF's got pretty wide range of color depth, of pixel depth inside. But we're going to do 16 in this one because we don't want to have too much of a big files. And I don't need to manipulate lighting uh, in this render because the lighting was set up properly so i don't need to do a lot of adjustments okay if you do have a lot of places where it's overexposed or underexposed in that case you gotta do 32 
bit channel in order to have enough information in your pixel so you can bring it back but in my image I don't have much overexposures or underexposures so I'm gonna do 16 bit okay so when you're done setting this up all your render elements here you click render and you take a walk because this render gonna take some time to finish okay Now, after you render this, you're gonna get all of those passes, as you can see here in red, green, and blue. What I'm gonna do is go and load all of them into stack, load files into stack. I'm gonna select and load everything from uh, my render day view. So everything here is going to be loaded. Click load and okay. and uh, all of those render elements now here going to build up in one file after all of this being built up i can start going and extracting every element from my scene so if we have this first element how do i extract it i'm gonna go to my channels and here if I select red, green, or blue, you can see the mask is switching from red, green, and blue. So, control and click on the mask, it will select that mask. And uh, we're gonna just add, let's add some curves, okay? Now, if I hide this one, we have this uh, curves that we just created from the mask and uh, let's zoom in into this boat so we'll see what we're doing here and double click on that one here and you can see i can bring if it's too dark i can bring all the exposure back and have a nice chrome looking boat so you can see this is very powerful tool in order to get uh, the right exposure color balance and everything uh, you need in order to correct that element so let's do another one i'm gonna go into the red channel i'm gonna click control on the red channel and now let's create uh, let's do levels okay i'm gonna hide that and on my levels here i can start manipulating my water in order to give it a really nice appearance all right so this stuff looks awesome already all right so this is how you basically work with those multimat elements now for my towers here i don't have to go in every tower let's go back to my max file i don't have to go in every tower and separate the floors and separate the glass because uh, I can extract that from that multimat element for instance all right so let's take my refraction filter I'm gonna bring it up as you can see this refraction already got all the masks in it so if I use this I'm gonna do control a control C gonna copy that I'm gonna hide it now let's duplicate my uh, background layer here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do control D to deselect and click on the mask here I can go into my channels unhide it and control V paste that mask inside inside my image inside my mask so I actually use this refraction filter as a mask so if I click right click on it you see I'm getting the selection of all those windows automatically and that's how I can isolate if I have a building and it's all green I can take that mask and crop it out of the building that way I will be left only with my floors without any glass and it also can work vice versa if I can uh, add some if I'm gonna do here apply layer mask 
and uh, you will see I'm only gonna get the glass element and every time I select this glass I can extract it uh, minus all those masks that we have here so for instance if we get the control D let's get this green tower here I'm going to hide all of that go to my green tower you see it's all full green and in order to detach my glass from the floors what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my green channel let's make a mask or let's do a brightness contrast out of this as you can see uh, that's my brightness contrast and if I apply some curves to it see I can change and manipulate my building in order to get better exposure now if I want to remove that exposure from the glass I just go into my selection here of the glass go back to my uh, window channel here of that building of that green building and we can just either delete or we can color that in black because black in the mask is something that removes that okay right there all right so if I do control D and let's uh, let's select that you can see I only have mask on my balconies so if my balconies are too dark or too light I can change their color without changing the color of the glass because I just extracted it out of that building okay so this is how you guys work with those render elements this is how you get those render elements and you can go from something that looks like this into something that looks like that all right so pretty big difference and um, in our Photoshop for architects we're going to discuss all of those different methods that I use in order to place people in order to give really nice quality to that image so it will look very appealing and photorealistic okay one last tip before we go in case you did forgot to render one of those elements and you don't want to render the entire image once again we can go and add render mask it's a free plugin from Ivan Taperiharov on his website you have a download button after you download it you can install it or make it as a widget or as a button inside your 3ds max already made this uh, button here called render mask and if we click on it we can go and uh, just by selecting this object for instance i forgot to render this uh, rooftop so on the luminance i'm gonna click render mask and i'm gonna have a render coming out with just this mask as you can see here it's a very quick and manual way to add masks to your render okay after that you can save it as jpeg and add it to your photoshop and use it to color correct your objects so if you have any questions post them below this is alex your b-ray guide talk soon ciao